Thank you very much. Um, so welcome, everybody. Uh, those of you that were here yesterday, uh, I hope you enjoyed the day as much as I did. Uh, I think we've got a great mix of presentations lined up for today. Uh, so I have high expectations. The main theme of this event is the opportunities and challenges of digitalization. So one of the things that we heard yesterday was that the presence of large amounts of data is a great opportunity, a business opportunity. At the same time, a number of speakers mentioned some of the challenges, security, we all know about, privacy in particular. And that got me thinking again about something that I have actually been thinking about for quite a while now, and, and that is the, the issue of privacy in our digitalized world. So I'm going to reflect on those, uh, that theme a little bit uh, before we move on to the main speakers. But before I do that, I have some good news for our chairman of the uh, conference, that's Ivica. Uh, very good news, Ivica. We have a new sponsor, last minute sponsor. This is very good news because we may be able to afford the cocktail bill for the speakers from yesterday evening. Uh, so this is excellent. I'm very excited about this new speaker. But there is a small cost. So the small cost is that we need to run uh, a little survey for them. So let me just tell you about this new sponsor, because uh, I think this is very interesting. Um, it's uh, Björn Cyborg, um, digital pants for the digital dude. Uh, it's not gender specific, but, but uh, so I apologize for the pictures are a bit gender specific, but, but don't worry. Uh, Björn Cyborg make all kinds of pants. And this is pants in the British sense, not the American sense, by the way. So, Björn Cyborg, very exciting revolutions in digital underwear. Um, but in order to fulfill our, our sponsorship obligations, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm asked to do a, a short survey. And it's a very short survey, so it's minimal information. So bear with me. Um, while we set up the survey. So I've, I've sent a URL, put up a URL, um, and I will just shift to the... Uh, well, my computer's gone to sleep, so... Mm -hmm. There we go. So uh, uh, here's the survey. Thank you for, for joining. Um, now, this, this system is another great example of digitalization. Uh, it's something I use in my uh, teaching uh, for doing quizzes during classes. Um, you can see from the bright flashing colors, actually there's music as well, but I, I won't turn the music on, uh, that this is kind of designed for, I would say, sort of six to 12-year-olds, that sort of age range. Um, I find it works extremely well with the 19 to 24-year-olds. Uh, um, who, who uh, also quite like the flashing colors and lights. Um, so I'm just going to give you a little taste of that today. Uh, but so anyway, thank you for joining in the survey. I think we, we have enough to, to uh, fulfill our obligations. So let's start the survey. Uh, and it's a very small survey. Oh, there are lots of people rushing in. They don't want to miss the survey. This is really great. Uh, all right, I'll give you a couple more seconds. We'll get some good data from this survey. It's excellent. And remember, if you, if you put a naughty name up, I can, I can kick you out any time. Okay. Over 60, that's excellent. You can join any time during the survey. So here's the survey. Are you ready? So, question. Did you put on clean underwear this morning? Okay, I'll give you a few minutes to reflect on that. The answers are flooding in. Uh, so it looks like we should be able to finish the survey quite soon. Yeah, what's the definition of clean? Yes, yeah, so I'll leave that to your interpretation. Okay, the answers are flying in. I think we've got enough answers now. I'll, I'll, I'll conclude that survey. Um, so there we are. Uh, 63.10, good statistics. But I suspect there's a bit of a problem. So those of you that know something about science, especially experimental science, I don't do experimental science, uh, 
But those of you who do experimental science are probably a little bit worried about this experiment, the quality of this experiment. Um, so, so what's the problem with it? Well, for one thing, I'm trying to ask you, I'm asking you a question which is quite sensitive. Uh, and you might know that I've worked quite a bit on computer security and these kind of issues, so there's a good chance that I can track, trace your answer to you. You might not be very comfortable about that. Maybe you predicted that. Or maybe you just don't feel comfortable about answering such a personal question. Now, this is a, an, this is a representative of the kind of issue that we might face, and we are facing, with the collection of data which is potentially sensitive. So how do we cope with that? Well, one way to cope with it, of course, is not to collect sensitive data at all. But then we don't get the opportunities. So we, if we meet the challenge of privacy by not collecting data, then we spoil the opportunities that we have from data. Now, as Jan Bosch said in his talk yesterday, most companies are not interested in you as an individual. They're only interested in the statistics. So in that, his, his reasoning was, well, you shouldn't worry about it. But you should worry about it because we don't know what the company's doing. We don't know that their computer systems are secure enough to secure the data that they collect. So even if they are honest, if they handle sensitive data, then you have to worry about not only the privacy, but also the security of the companies handling this data. So can we do better? Well, there is a way, um, and I'm going to try and explain that to you in a few minutes. So the idea goes back to survey techniques from the 60s. And the idea will be as follows. I would like you to flip two coins, okay? Now, if I know this audience as well as I know some of my colleagues, people in the sort of IT area are often quite poorly coordinated. We'll have coins everywhere. Uh, and unfortunately, we don't take Swish or a credit card. So what I want you to do is mentally toss two coins, okay? In your head, flip two coins, and it'll be one of these four combinations. Tails, tails, heads, 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 tails, or tails, heads, okay? Don't tell anybody the outcome of your coin toss. Keep that secret. That's your secret. I don't know it. Nobody else knows it. Only you know it, okay? So keep that in mind, and we will go back to the survey. So, the next question, same question. Did you put on clean underwear this morning? Wait before you answer. Do not answer yet. If you toss two tails, answer yes, no matter what. If you toss two heads, answer no, no matter what. And if you answered one of the other two combinations, if you chose one of the other two combinations or flipped the coins in those other two ways, answer truthfully. Now, it's safe to answer truthfully because even if I see your answer, even if I can take that answer and say, that's your answer, I have no way of knowing whether you got that answer by flipping the coins in a certain way or whether you really didn't put on clean underwear this morning. So you have deniability. Even if I find out what your data is, you can deny that you have dirty underwear. Okay, the example is rather frivolous. But in fact, this is an idea that we can scale up. So, let's see what the results are. And this is a very small sample, so it's not a very statistically useful survey. But nonetheless, we get the idea. So what is the idea here? Well, now we have a different view of the results. But bear in mind that we know roughly how many answers of this total. So we have 74 answers. So we know that a roughly half of those answers are random. Okay? Around 36 answers are random. So that means we can deduct roughly 18 
yeses and 18 noes from these statistics. And the result will be roughly, but statistically accurate, if we had a large enough sample, the true proportion of people with clean versus less clean undergarments. Now, this is an old idea, but it turns out that it's an idea we can apply to problems in privacy, in data which is collected not in a human survey, but data which is collected automatically from our devices. So let me skip ahead. So this is the area of so-called differential privacy, an emerging mathematical definition of privacy of which this old idea is one instance. And the essence is that you can reduce privacy risk to make it as small as possible, to as small as you like, by ensuring that the participation of any individual in a given survey won't affect the results in a significant way, and thereby making it safe from a privacy point of view to allow your data to be used. And the consequence is that we get a robust definition of privacy with good properties. Now, at Chalmers, we've been studying this in a number of different research groups and research projects, uh, studying this version of privacy. For example, to understand how we can send data from smart meters, which tell you a lot about the way your household is using electricity and, and the contents of your household. How we can send that data using this technology. Or how we can uh, implement machine learning, how we can train machine learning systems in a way that doesn't risk the privacy of the individuals whose data we're using for the training process. And we've also look, we're also looking at how in the modern connected car, we can collect data for the benefit of the driver and for business opportunities in ways that do not risk the privacy of the individuals involved. And I can mention that there are some tentative and, and relatively new real-world applications. The Chrome browser uses this to understand your aspects of your surfing history without reading, revealing your, the details. They want to know the big picture statistics of which web pages you're visiting without actually knowing your individual data. Similarly, Apple are using this to train their text uh, prediction and their emoji prediction engine, sending your data in a way that doesn't risk your privacy. So I think this is a, this is a good, I'm, I'm closing now, but I, this is a good illustration of where challenges and opportunities meet, where the challenges of privacy can be handled by technical means to open up for new opportunities. So what I'm looking forward to in today's talk is better understanding the challenges uh, and opportunities and we have an excellent collection of uh, speakers, and I won't go through them all, including industrial sessions uh, and international speakers. So I think you're going to enjoy today's program. I hope you enjoy it as much as I hope to enjoy it. Uh, and with that, I uh, welcome you to the rest of the day. Thank you. <laughs>